Lord, we gather here to celebrate, to worship Jesus, what you accomplished on the cross. I pray that you would guide us, lead us as we consider these truths that we would just make much of you. And Jesus, it's always in your great name we pray. Amen. Please open your Bibles to 1 Peter chapter 1. 1 Peter chapter 1, we're going to be in verses 17 through 19. 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 17 through 19. Chapter 1 of 1 Peter helps us to understand part of the Father's role in salvation. It tells us that God, the Father, chooses believers to obey Jesus Christ. That he caused believers to be born again. That he protects believers by his power. And that he is the one that called believers. And based on these great truths, Peter exhorts believers to prepare their minds for action, to keep sober, and in relation to the Father, as obedient children, do not be conformed to your formal lusts, but be holy as your Father is holy. And this brings us to our passage today. Please follow along as I read in 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 17 through 19. If you address as Father, the one who impartially judges according to each one's work, conduct yourselves in fear during the time of your stay on earth, knowing that you were not redeemed with perishable things like silver or gold from your feudal way of life inherited from your forefathers, but with precious blood, as of a lamb unblemished and spotless, the blood of Christ. The main point of these verses is the command to conduct yourselves in fear. Peter is specifically addressing this command to believers. Notice the beginning of verse 17 where he says, If you address his father, the one who impartially judges according to each one's work, Peter is drawing special attention to the relationship believers have with this one who judges. However, before we press forward to discuss what Peter has to say to believers, we need to recognize that this one, this impartial judge, is also the judge of unbelievers. Everyone in this world has a relationship to this judge, and there are only two categories of people. The ones that address him as father and the ones that don't. This time of communion is a time of worship for those that have been chosen, that have been called, that have been born again. For those that address this judge as father, this is the time for them. And it's a time that we take a piece of bread and it's a time that we take a cup of juice. And this is to remember Christ's body that was given at the cross and his blood that was shed. If you would say by your own admission that you're not a believer, we'd simply ask you to pass those by, those elements by when they come. However, if that's how you classify yourself as an unbeliever, I want you to know that after your stay here on earth, you will stand before this judge. And verse 17 tells us that he is not partial to any. Nobody will get special treatment in his court. And he will judge you according to your works, according to your lawless deeds. And because you don't meet the perfect standard, you will be found guilty. And you will be sentenced and punished accordingly, eternally. But you have the opportunity right now to turn from yourselves, from your sin, and turn to Christ. Talk to me or any one of the other pastors or the person who brought you. We would love to discuss what a relationship to Christ is like. Believers, we're commanded to conduct ourselves in fear during our temporary stay here on earth. As we live our lives, as we pursue holiness, we're to do it in fear. And this is where Pastor John's equipping hour on the fear of the Lord has just been super helpful. This fear 
is not the terror that unbelievers will experience when they die. But it is a fear that drives a sinner to instinctively cling to God, tremble at his word, to obey him and love him, and to be consumed with pleasing him. What enables us to conduct ourselves in fear as we live here on this earth? Peter tells us that in verses 18 and 19. It's something that we already know, and it's something that we continue to apply. Verse 18, knowing that you were not redeemed with perishable things like silver or gold from your feudal way of life inherited from your forefathers, but with precious blood as of a lamb unblemished and spotless, the blood of Christ. Christian, you were redeemed. This word means to set free by paying a ransom. A financial transaction took place. God paid it, and you were set free. Notice the word redeemed is past tense. This redemption took place when you first believed, when you were born again. And from what were you redeemed? From what were you held captive? From what were you unable to set yourselves free from? Verse 18 tells us that you were redeemed from your futile way of life. Believer, you were imprisoned and held captive in your godless, futile, lawless, sinful way of life that only led to destruction and rightfully under the wrath of God. And God the Father called you and caused you to be born again. And what did God use as the currency to set you free? Was it silver or gold or some precious metal that has significant value? Verse 18 tells us that it was not with perishable things like silver or gold. And then verse 18 says that it was with precious blood as of a lamb unblemished and spotless, the blood of Christ. Jesus Christ was the only perfect one. He never sinned. So when Jesus, fully God and fully man, condescended to earth and went to the cross to die, and when his blood was shed, this passage tells us that his blood, his precious blood, had value far surpassing anything that was perishable, like silver or gold. His blood was of infinite worth and had eternal value. His blood was the only currency acceptable to pay your ransom and was the only currency sufficient to set you free. When your hearts are prepared, go ahead and take communion on your own.